In exercise one, you are going to review the use of the microscope. During the first lab, you'll learn how to remove a microscope from the cabinet, the names and functions of the microscope parts, the difference between magnification and resolution, focusing a human blood smear at different magnifications, and troubleshooting the microscope. Finally, you'll learn the proper care and maintenance of the microscope, something that is essential in the microbiology laboratory. This is a representation of the microscope that you'll be using in lab. We do have several different types of microscopes, and they all function the same, but their parts may be in a different place. Taking a look then at the parts of the microscope, we're going to start at the top. The oculars are the eyepieces. They have lenses that magnify images ten times. Inside the right ocular, there may be a pointer. It's going to appear as a line. It can be moved by rotating the ocular. The ocular is going to sit in an ocular tube. Below the ocular is a diopter adjustment ring. We'll show you how to use this in lab. This ring is used to accommodate the fact that both of your eyes may not be focused, at, focused the same. This ring is found on both ocular tubes. Most of you will find that you don't have to do any adjustments, that your eyes are pretty close in their ability uh, to magnify. The ocular tube houses the lenses and, can be, and must be adjusted for their interpupillary distance. Because this is a binocular microscope, everybody's distance between their eyes is a little different. So I'll show you in lab how to adjust these so that you see a single image rather than two distinct images. The head is the top part of the microscope. It contains a delicate prism system which helps send an image to the oculars and your eyes. This image is actually going to be inverted and this is a, bind this is a um, compound microscope. It has two sets of lenses and whatever you're looking at actually is going to be upside down or reversed from what you see on the slide. That really isn't much of a problem in microbiology because we're looking at microbes. They don't have heads or tails. The body is the part of the microscope that houses the revolving nose piece and hanging down from the revolving nose piece is the, re the objective lenses. The revolving nose piece contains four objectives and they are going to have various magnifications. Yours may be different from somebody else's in the lab but in general there are four objectives uh, hanging down from the revolving turret or the revolving nose piece. The objective lenses uh, on your microscope will have four different magnifications. Typically we'll find a 4x, a 10x, a 40x, and a 100x. This 100x objective is special. It's an oil immersion lens. It's a longer lens and it can only be used with oil. No other lens on the microscope is going to be used with oil. The longer the objective, the more magnification it has and therefore it's going to be very short, very close to the slide. This, the distance between the slide and the objective is called the working distance and it's something you always have to pay attention to uh, simply because when you turn the, f the focus knobs you don't want to smash your slide. More importantly you don't want to damage the objective lens. The arm is the part of the microscope that you're going to hold when you pick it up. It holds all of the other parts. The coarse focus knob is found on the side of the microscope. It's stacked with the fine focus knob. Take a moment and locate it on this image. This knob allows you to focus your image with the microscope. You're only going to use the coarse adjustment knob when using the 4x and the 10x lenses. And this is because this knob will, will move the objectives or the stage, depending upon your microscope, rapidly. If you are cranking this rapidly, there's a risk that you could smash the slide or damage your objective if you are using a higher power objective. The fine focus knob is going to fine tune the focus of your specimen and it moves the objectives very slowly. You want to be sure that you are using this knob when you are using the 40x objective and the 100x objective to avoid damaging the microscope or the slide. Moving on, the base is the part of the microscope that holds everything in place. It's used in transport of the microscope. The mechanical stage. This is where the specimen is placed for observation. 
there's going to be a slide holder with a clamp. This typically swings out and it holds the slide snugly in place. With the slide in place, it can be moved in the X and Y directions using stage control knobs. The X stage control knob will move the slide in the X axis horizontally or east-west on the mechanical stage. The Y stage control knob is going to move north-south in the Y axis direction. You're going to use these knobs in order to center your specimen in the middle of your uh, stage so that you can begin viewing. Never move the stage with your hands. Always use these X and Y stage control knobs or you might damage the microscope. Finally, below the stage, you can see that, there's the condenser system. This sort of looks like a camera lens. It's a system of lenses which helps to focus light directly on the specimen that is mounted on the slide. The condenser can be moved up and down with the condenser focus knob. The diaphragm lever is found on the condenser and it is used to control the diameter of the iris diaphragm. It works a lot like your eye iris. It opens up and closes and you are going to adjust this when you are using living specimens. The condenser focus knob is used to focus light properly on the mounted specimen. There is a general rule of thumb in microbiology when viewing a stained specimen the condenser should be all the way up and when viewing a wet mount the condenser should be partially down. Pretty much the same with the iris diaphragm. If you're looking at a stained specimen you want the iris diaphragm to be open and when you are looking at a living specimen you want to partially close the iris diaphragm. The iris diaphragm is used to vary the diameter of the field iris limiting the amount of light passing through the condenser. On the base of the microscope, there is a brightness control knob or, and a power switch. Sometimes they're located together. This knob controls the brightness of the light and also may act as the on-off switch. We'll go over this in lab, but it's important not to start with the brightness all the way up. It's nearly blinding if you do that, so you always want to start with the, bright, the brightness at about 80%. If it's too bright for you, you want to ad adjust it a little lower. Every time you increase your magnification, it's important to remember to increase your light. Finally, there's an illuminator. This is the lamp that's going to provide the light. It houses a halogen bulb in the base of the microscope, and it will illuminate your specimen. The halogen bulb is ideal because it gives a wavelength of light in the blue range, and the blue range is ideal for resolution, which we'll look at in a moment. Lighting is very important in microscopy. Every time light goes from one material to the other, from glass to air or glass to water, it's going to bend. That bending is called refraction. There are a number of ways that light can be adjusted in the microscope. You can adjust that brightness control knob on the bottom, the rheostat. You can move the condenser up or down. And finally, opening and closing the iris diaphragm can also adjust the light. There are different reasons why we move each, why we change each of these different components of the microscope to adjust our light. Resolution is different than magnification. It refers to the sharpness of the image. It depends on two things. The amount of light that you can get into the lens, and typically more is better, and the wavelength of light. Shorter is better. Blue light is shorter than red light. The photons, packets of light energy, can travel in between very close together objects on the slide and you'll get better resolution with a shorter wavelength of light. In fact, ultraviolet light gives very good resolution, but ultraviolet light, being a very short wavelength, also damages the eye. We do use UV light microscopes, but we use uh, protective filters to prevent the microsc microscopist from getting harmed. It's very important that the microscopic field when you are looking through the microscope is white. If it appears amber colored you don't have enough light and you will not get the best resolution. If you find that you have a white light in the background and it's too bright for your eyes, adjust the light at the iris diaphragm instead of at the rheostat. 
During our first lab, I'm going to explain to you how to properly use, clean, and store the microscope. I'll take you through this step by step, realizing that it may have been some time since you've used a microscope. You're going to observe a human blood smear at various magnifications and light levels during the first period. During the second period, you're going to observe stained bacterial smears and learn something about bacterial arrangements. It's very important in this lab to pay attention. You'll be using the microscope for nearly the entire semester and getting familiar with it during this first lab will prevent a lot of stress as you are moving along through the semester. This is what you'll see with magnification of the human blood smear. You can see that the total magnification when the 4x lens is in place is 40x. This is because you have 10x magnification from your oculars. When you look at a human blood smear, it's impossible to distinguish the red blood cells from the white blood cells at a magnification of 40x. We call the 4x lens the scanning lens. It really is not very important to us in microbiology because microbes are so small that this magnification doesn't give us much information. 100x total magnification is what we see with the 10x lens in place. This is where we begin magnification in the microbiology class because 100x magnification will give us some image in the field that we can then begin our focusing. It's important when you focus on an object or a cell that you place it smack in the middle of the microscopic field. It will always stay in the middle of the microscopic field and as you change objectives it will be larger and larger because of the increasing magnification. Now at 100x total magnification you can see the red blood cells which are purplish red in this image and the white blood cells are stained a dark purple color. You can see some difference in the 100x magnification right here in these two white blood cells. Now when we magnify to 400x total magnification using the 40x lens we get much more detail. This is a very interesting field. Typically you don't see this many white blood cells in one field but you can definitely see the different types of neutrophils. This is a neutrophil. It's called a segmented neutrophil. These three are banded neutrophils. This one is an eosinophil, this one is a basophil, this one is a macrophage, a monocyte, excuse me, it's a monocyte. These are all red blood cells and these tiny little dirt specks right here, those are platelets. 40x magnification gives us enough magnification in order to view these blood cells. Now in a clinical laboratory, the clinician would proceed to 1000x magnification. This requires oil with the 100x lens and of course you can see much more detail in the nucleus as well as in the cytoplasm of these cells. You also note that these red blood cells do not have a nucleus. Red blood cells in the human have lost their nuclei. Troubleshooting becomes an important part of microbiology because there's only one of me and usually 20 or more of you in the lab so I can't get to you very quickly and it's easier if you can figure out what your problem is before you call me over. So some of the things that I typically hear is I can see it using 10x but it disappears when I switch to the 40x objective. Some of the things that might be wrong include your slide may be upside down. Remember that working distance? The working distance is crucial and if the working distance of course is too much between the slide and the objectives as it would be if your slide was upside down you're going to find this at 10x but you will not be able to find it using the 40x lens. You can check if your slide is upside down if it is a stain preparation that you made by scraping the stain with your fingernail and it will come off so you'll know which is the upside of the slide and which, you know, which is the underside of the slide. With a prepared slide there's going to be a label on it so it's less likely that you put your slide upside down. Another thing that might be wrong is you might not have put your specimen in the center of the field. If it's in the center of the field, when you switch your objective lens, it's still going to be in the center of the field. However, because the area of the slide that you are looking at becomes smaller and smaller as you increase the magnification, if your specimen is, say, at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock and you switch uh, your objective lens, you might not see it. It may be on the periphery and now it will be gone. 
If you don't uh, click the objective into place, you're not going to have a straight path of light and you're not going to see anything. This is probably the most common error that students make when they can't find it from one magnification to the other. Just check to see that your objective is clicked into place. You will hear the click when it's in the proper seating. And if you don't increase your light, you're going to have difficulty with resolution. I see dirt in the field, or I don't know if this is dirt or if this is a microorganism. Well, if it is dirt, we call these artifacts, you have to decide where the artifact is. If it's on the slide, you can figure that out if you move the slide to the right or the left. The artifact is going to move to the right or the left. If the dirt is on the ocular, you can figure that out by rotating the oculars. The oculars will spin around, so look through them, rotate the ocular, and if the dirt spins around and round, then it is on the ocular. You can clean the ocular with some lens paper. The dirt might be on the condenser. In order to determine this, you want to move the condenser down. If the artifact, artifact disappears, then it was on the condenser. The dirt could be on the objective. The way to figure that out is change the objective. If the objective is changed and the artifact disappears, that's where it was. Another problem is uh, I don't have light or the field is too dark. First, Especially in our laboratory, it's important to check the GFI switch at the table. This is just like the GFI switch that you have next to perhaps your kitchen sink or in your bathroom. It often is going to pop, especially if you all plug your microscope in at the same time. You may have to reset it. You're going to find that if the GFI switch has been activated, uh, then there will be more than one person at the table that doesn't have light. The GFI switches are located on the sides of the benches. Check the dimmer, the rheostat, to be sure it isn't completely closed. Check the iris diaphragm. It also may be closed. Remember that there are many other students using these microscopes, especially Bio 101 students. They're very new to microscopy and they feel like moving any, any old knob is going to improve their ability to see something. They often leave the microscopes in a state where the um, iris diaphragm might be completely closed or the dimmer rheostat may be completely closed. Check to see again if your lens is clicked into place. If the lens isn't clicked to place, you're not going to see anything. And check the ring around the illuminator. Not everybody is going to have this. This is called an, an annular diaphragm. If someone closes this annular diaphragm, like a Bio 101 student, you won't be able to get any light through your microscope. When we're all done using the microscope, it's very important to care for it properly. These microscopes are expensive, they cost thousands of dollars, and we have to ensure that we can use them for many years to come. The first thing you'll do is remove your slide from the stage and replace it in the slide tray. If there's oil on it, remove the oil with a tissue. Turn off the light and unplug the microscope. It is important that you turn off the light. This will extend the bulb the, bulb life, uh, the bulbs are very expensive and they're very difficult to change. Using a piece of lens paper, you are going to clean the microscope from the top down. You'll start with the oculars, cleaning the two eyepieces. Do the objectives next from the lowest power, 4x, to the highest power, but, just, but don't clean the oil lens just yet. Next, you'll do the condenser lens followed by the stage. If there's oil on the stage, wipe it off uh, with a separate piece of lens paper. The oil lens is going to be cleaned as last, and I'll talk about this in period two procedures. If you ever find oil on a microscope before you use it, please report it. I do keep track of this. It's important that we keep the microscopes clean, and I do have to yell at somebody if we find that microscope has been, uh, an oil has been left on a microscope. In microbiology, you are going to disinfect the stage, the base, the arm, and any knobs with a disinfecting wipe if any live cultures were used during the lab period. If we just use uh, stained specimens, you don't have to disinfect the microscope. Because these microscopes can be fomites, they can be objects that can transmit infectious disease, we have to ensure that we disinfect them. 
you're going to wrap the cord loosely around the base of the microscope and then you're going to position the lenses so the 4x lens is protruding. These microscopes are going to go back into the cabinet and if the 100x lens is protruding it can actually smash into the back of the cabinet as you are pushing the microscope in. The 100x lens is very expensive and we don't want to damage it. If the 4x lens is protruding it will not protrude past the stage and therefore you won't damage the lens. Use both hands and lift the microscope put it in stage first into the cabinet. You're going to pull it into the garage rather than back it into the garage. During period two, you're going to learn how to use the oil immersion lens, the shapes and morphologies of three bacterial types, the proper care of the microscope after using immersion oil, Immersion oil will be used in many, many labs in microbiology. Immersion oil is necessary with the 100x lens. It has the same refractive index or ability to bend light as glass. It does not influence magnification, but it influence resolu influences resolution. Resolution is the sharpness of the image. If you forget to use oil, you will still see a magnified image, but it's going to be blurry. It won't be resolved. Using a drop of oil is going to limit refraction, so it actually helps to gather the light rays. And remember that resolution depends on two things, the amount of light and the wavelength of light. So this is going to influence the amount of light that is going to get into the lens. Only the 100x lens can be used with immersion oil. If you get oil on any other lens, immediately clean it from the lens by very gently blotting with toilet paper and then cleaning the lens with lens paper and lens cleaner. Both lens paper and lens cleaner, as well as toilet paper, can be found in the drawer at your table. Be sure you don't drag the 40x lens through the oil when you are changing objectives. Always rotate the other way. The 4X lens and the 10X lens are not long enough to touch the slide, but the 40X lens is. Nearly every stained specimen we will look at in this lab will require oil immersion, so get familiar with it. Oil immersion cannot be used with a wet mount. The cover slip will stick to the lens. We'll be doing wet mounts in lab and you'll only be using a total of 400X magnification with the wet mount. Oil immersion can be used on a prepared slide when the cover slip is fixed in place. Nearly all the prepared slides that we have have a fixed cover slip. It's glued down so oil will not stick to the uh, cover slip and move it around. Oil can be applied directly on top of a stain slide. All of the stain slides that you make in lab will not be cover slipped. You'll just put oil directly on top of the stain and observe it. If you want to save the slide for future observation, it's going to have oil on it. So don't wipe the oil away. If you wipe the oil away, you're going to wipe the specimen off as well. Simply turn the slide over on a paper towel and let the oil blot away until the next lab. The morphologies and arrangements that you are going to be seeing in lab include the cocci. Cocci are spherical shaped organisms that come in several different arrangements. The first is cocci in pairs. This is referred to as diplococci. In packets of four, we call them tetracoxi or tetrads. In clusters, we call them staphylococci. The prefix staph means berries. In chains, we call them streptococci. And in clusters of 8, 16, or 32, somewhat like a Rubik's Cube, we call them sarcinae. Cocci are all spherical, but sometimes they'll have a jelly bean shape, or they may have a triangular type of arrowhead shape. And the singular for cocci is pronounced caucus. 
The next shape that you'll see is called the bacillus. The singular is, I'm sorry, plural is bacilli. Some uh, people call it bacilli. I call it bacilli. They are rod shaped and they have a variety of different shapes. They might be long and pointy, we call that fusiform. They might be short and fat, that's sort of between a caucus and a bacillus, so we call those coccobacilli. Uh, they might be blunt on the ends, they might be rounded on the ends, they could be thin, they could be fat, a uh, whole variety of bacilli that we find. They come in different arrangements as well, but sometimes they're just all by themselves. When they don't stick to one another, there is no specific arrangement. But when they do stick to one another, we see an arrangement like this one, the streptobacillus. Streptobacilli will be bacillus in chains, sort of like stitching on your jeans. Diplobacilli, di meaning two, these are bacilli in pairs, end to end. This image also shows you a lot of white blood cells in the background. Palisades is like dominoes or picket fences. Chinese letters looks somewhat like Chinese, Chinese writing. These are typically X and Y type arrangements. You can see very thin bacilli uh, sort of fallen down like pickup sticks. And the third shape that's of clinical support importance is the spiral shape. All spiral shaped bacteria live singly, so we won't find any arrangements. The first is the spirillum, which is a loose coil. Second is the spirochete, which is a tight coil, very much like a slinky. And the last is a comma shaped bacterium, and we call this arrangement Vibrio. After we use oil, it's very important to blot the oil gently from the 100x lens. We do use toilet paper for this because lens paper is not very absorbent, but toilet paper will scratch. You know your, do your eye doctor told you don't ever use toilet paper or Kleenex on your glasses because it will scratch. And the same thing will happen in the micro lab. So we use this toilet paper very gently just to blot away any excess oil. We can also use um, the toilet paper on a prepared slide in order to take the oil away from it. If you're going to use a slide that you've prepared, remember don't rub the oil off. Blot it off with a paper towel by turning it upside down. After we get the oil off, we're going to use lens paper to clean the lens. If you'd like to, you can also use some lens cleaner, but it really isn't necessary uh, unless you notice that the microscope was dirty. The oil lens is going to be the last thing you clean because you don't want to get, any, get oil on any other part of the microscope. Be sure that the oil lens is not protruding when you return the microscope to the cabinet.